Uh, we are the event logging team of the FRG group. So let's start with the outline. This is the outline of our today's presentation. So move uh, quickly, get, let's go through it. And let's start with the introduction. So we all know what is event logging. Event logging is basically capturing the, all the activities of a user and um, store them so that they can be usually uh, further. So what is the basic motivation behind uh, using uh, the event logging? So we are using the event logging so that we can capture the events so that they can be used by the recommendation system to give the recommendations. And other reason is to provide the analytics. Using these events, we will be able to provide the analytics to the user that will assist them in the decision making. Using that, they can make a better decision whether they want to join this community or not by seeing the top communities, uh, top trending articles, and popularity of a community over time. So what are the techn technology that we have used? We have used the Django middleware, ELK, which stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, C3, JS, and the Django REST framework. So what is the Django middleware? In this uh, the Django app, the the Django middleware basically acts like a hook. So we are capturing the event using our customized the Django middleware. We will see uh, this thing in detail in the coming slides. Then there's a C3JS. C3JS basically used for uh, plotting the graphs. Uh, so that is basically used for the visualization. And then there is the Django REST framework, which is used for building the API, which we have built. And then the most important thing of our project is ELK. So we, as we know that ELK is acronym for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Elasticsearch is a search uh, and storing engine using which we can uh, quickly get the data on a simple request. Logstash, Logstash basically acts as a pipeline. It can take the input simultaneously from multiple sources, process or apply the filters on the inputs and then uh, gives the output. And Kibana, Kibana is used for visualization uh, for the admin. So let's see the overall workflow of the uh, R module. So basically our project uh, can be divided into three parts. First part deals with capturing the events, processing the log structure, and then storing them in the Elasticsearch. The second is to develop an API using which we can query the Elasticsearch and get the logs from there. And the third is the analytics part. In analytics part, we provide the visualization to the user. So first of all, there's the collaboration system main web app. We are capturing the events using the middleware. Then the event logging module processes uh, those events and develops the or builds the log structure. After building the log structure, these logs are passed to the Elasticsearch via the Logstash pipeline. There the logs are stored. The Kibana is used to provide the visualization to the admin. And this is the first part. You can say this is the first part. In the second part, we develop an API. In API, uh, you query the API, you call the API, and uh, API uses the Elasticsearch built-in API and query the Elasticsearch and gets the data from there, process it, and provide it to the user or the client. Basically, we have the client the recommendation system, or any other user can use our API. Then the visualization part that is not shown here, and that is the third part. So how we are capturing the events. The most important thing of our module is that our module is totally separate from the collaborative system. There's just a middleware. The middleware acts as a hook. Using that, we are capturing all the HTTP requests, and we process those requests. So uh, every request which comes to the Django fast, first pass to the Django middleware. So these are the default uh, middleware, the common middleware, sessionware, CRS middleware. These middleware are by default are provided by the Django. So the module or the middleware which we have developed is our customized module. Uh, that is the event log middleware. We have uh, put that e middleware uh, below all these middle, uh, middlewares. So all the requests which comes to the Django server uh, passes through our event log middleware. Our event log middleware captures the uh, request and then captures the event. So the capturing of the event, I have told you, that is done by the middleware. So what is the benefit of using this middleware? So using this middleware, uh, our system is totally separate and we don't have to change the, uh, in the main uh, code. And it can be used in the Django, any Django app, app. So our module uh, can be used in any other Django app. So uh, this is how the logs are captured. So now the next step is creating the logs. That will be explained by Kartik. So good afternoon, everyone. Now I will explain you how we are actually creating the logs. So first, uh, the, as the request comes, HTTP request comes to the event log, uh, to the, uh, as the request comes, it passes through the event log middleware, and we capture all the information that comes with the request. It contains the request and some URL par parameters that are passed along with the request. 
and uh, all this is packed in a Python dictionary, and that Python dictionary is sent uh, to the event log module via the send request data function. Now the event log module temporarily stores all these uh, Python dictionary objects in a bucket, which is basically a Python list and is used in a FIFO manner, that is first in, first out. And then there is a process request function uh, which runs in a separate thread and continuously checks if any Python object is present for further processing or not. And if one is available, it fetches it from the front of the list and then deletes it from the list. And uh, then the process request function passes this request object to the event name mapper function, which uh, matches it against the uh, registered patterns using the request URL and the request uh, method present in the dictionary object. Now, if it ag matches against the patterns that are registered, it re returns the name for that event, uh, for that pattern to the process request function. And the process request function, if it sees that the event name is not none, it passes that event name along with the Python object to the create log function. The create log function knows how to create the actual logs. It adds the some common fields and event specific fields to the, to the uh, Python dictionary and passes it back to the process request function. Finally, the process request function passes it to the store log, store log function which knows how to store the logs. It can be stored in ELK as shown in this case or it can be stored in files or it can be further uh, enhanced for, for future. So these are some of the important points regarding the how the logs are created. First of all, the size of the bucket which temporarily holds the, log, uh, for, holds the Python objects for logging is not fixed. The other thing is the process request function which actually processes the logs uh, is runs in a separate daemon thread so that it does not affect the performance of the main system in a major way. The other thing is for now we can store the logs in file or in Elasticsearch, but here we have shown only it with the Elasticsearch because storing the logs in a file is not useful. And the other thing is the logs that, that are passed to the ELK are stored in the JSON format. So here is a sample log structure that we have captured. This log structure is generated for the community view event. Uh, when, uh, when anyone views some community, th this event is generated and the name of the event as you can see in the event name field is event.community.view. This is the format that we have chosen to uh, name our events. The format that we follow is the event, then some resource like community or article or anything and then after the, after the finally comes the any one, one of the current events like view or edit or something else. And then you can see there are some common fields that are common to all the events. For example, IP address, path info, timestamp, host, etc. And there are some fields which are specific to the given event. For this example, you can see that if the, someone has viewed some community, the community ID of the uh, community ID is stored in the event in the nested structure called event. So now Rahul will explain you how the logs are actually stored in Elasticsearch. So good afternoon, everybody. Now storing the logs in Elasticsearch. We have to log scatter by the event log module that will be stored in the Elasticsearch. There are some of the ways uh, this event log module send the HTTP put request to the log stash. This log in the in the log stash, these logs are filtered by the indexes and these process logs are sent to the Elasticsearch. The Elasticsearch produce the index, the index uh, if not created and it stores the log in it. Uh, the index is actually a, a, a table uh, in a SQL database like thing. And uh, these logs which are stored here can be fetched from the Elasticsearch by using the event log API. We have, uh, we have written the uh, event log REST API through which um, logs can be fetched out. And we have a Kiwana which visualizes the different uh, logs in, in the super admin. So we have uh, important points here. Elasticsearch, Logstats, and Kiwana, which, have, which runs on different ports in the Docker. The name of the index is logs logs, which can be uh, changed in the settings. The index is actually the table, which is, uh, in, which is a table in the SQL database. The Kiwana is, uh, right now is available only for super admin users. And the Elasticsearch uses DSL queries like uh, build over Apache looking. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon everyone. I am Vishrat and 
Okay, so our event log system provides a REST-based API which is used to extract the data from the Elasticsearch. It is basically a wrapper over the already existing search API of the Elasticsearch. Our API is secured using the token-based authentication and the data uh, which, we, which will be obtained from this API will be used by the recommendation system to train their module and also for the user analytics. So these are some of the features of the event log REST API. So first of all, pagination. So whenever the calls are made to this API, a large number of results are written, which uh, creates a load on the system. So as to, so to avoid this, the results are paginated and then they can be handled more effectively. Then there is sorting, then filters can be applied on the searches and the data can be grouped uh, according to some special category. So the, one of the main imp, uh, uh, aims of the event logging system was to provide the user analytics to, the, uh, to show the meaningful uh, analytics to the users. So we have created three dashboards, uh, the article dashboard, the community view dash, community dashboard, and the user dashboard. So in the article dashboard, there is the article view timeline. In the community dashboard, there is a community view timeline, the most viewed articles in the community, and the trending articles of the community. For the user personalized dashboard, we have the uh, recent activities done by the user, the user's is most viewed article, and the state of the article, uh, in current state of the article which the user has created. So these are some of the snapshots. So uh, a bar graph is used to show, show the most viewed articles, a pie chart to uh, show the current status of the articles of the user, and a view timeline to identify the activity of the community. So the ELK which we have used uh, runs on a separate Docker. The Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana uh, are uh, in the, runs on the uh, different containers. Uh, here is the source uh, link for the GitHub repo. Uh, the Selenium testing has been done to verify that the logs are uh, stored properly in the Elasticsearch. Uh, they are the log structure which has been formed is accurate and that the REST API returns the accurate data. This testing was done by the notification team of the fundamental research group. So the problem solved were since our project uses the Django middleware, uh, we don't, don't have to change anything in the existing code. Uh, also, adding of the new events is very easy uh, with this. Uh, the API provides the data which can be used by the other systems and some basic analytics are added to show the users. So future scope. Uh, since we are using the middleware, the browser events aren't captured much. Such as browser events such as window resize or the scroll events aren't captured, but they too provide some of the important uh, behavior results. So they can be captured. So the, also the video events such as the time at which the user skip, the portion at which the user skip, the uh, speed at which the user was viewing, those two can be logged. Uh, some more in-depth analysis of this can also be uh, added and uh, the storage of the logs in the cloud. Uh, these are the references. So have you also implemented a recommender system? No. No, right? No, no, that's fine. So from what I understand, the Output of your work is being used by the recommender system team. Yes. Is that the case? Yes, sir. So how come they were able to do the, both their works? Okay, but only after they completed, they might have. Okay, okay. So what are the other benefits of event logging? It's like, are there any other benefits of event logging other other than a recommender system, of course? It can be used for the security purposes. Like, uh, it can be used for 
So can it be also used for debugging? Uh, means like in case if there is any problem, we can look at the explore yes, the. If the system runs into some type of error, then we can see the logs generated and means what have activities have been done that led to this error or something mm. like that. That also can be viewed from the logs. Mm. So, and just one more question is like, why did you choose ELK? Means like, are there any other alternatives, or you just you were just asked to implement using this? We can use MongoDB, but the problem with the MongoDB is that it does not provide the RESTful API. So we have to create our own API for uh, these things like pagination, sorting, and a lot of aggregation and other stuff. So ELK, Elasticsearch provides its own search API. So we just use that API, and then we have we can send uh, using the uh, HTTP. Uh, we can send the request uh, for storing the logs using the uh, HTTP because uh, MongoDB I don't think provides uh, this kind of HTTP. Okay. Uh, uh, right, so you got everything in one package. So yeah, so that's the main reason. How many REST APIs you have written? Uh, one APIs. Sir, we have five endpoints in one our API. API endpoints. And then there are get parameters that can be added, like for uh, sorting and sorting custom fields and other things. So I had this uh, very general question. So you made an event logging system, which can be used for, uh, you know, as you said, debugging and you know, lots of applications of it. So uh, do you know of any system like this that is already in place? There might be, right? Like ADX is logging, ADX, ADX system is logging. Okay. ADX no, no, as in uh, something that anybody can plug, like your system is a plug and play yes, system, yes. right? Somebody can take it and implement it yes. on the back end as a middleware and go ahead with it. Yeah. So something like that. So you can read up on it, that's it. Okay, thank you, great.